everybody. Dave here. We are at the northern headquarters for new to you fishing in the workshop. Uh, that means the basement in this case instead of the attic. And uh, this is where we come during uh, snowbird season uh, during the summer and uh, work on reels and rods, clean service, and uh, that's pretty much done for the year. And now it's time to make rigs. And uh, I didn't make as many as I should have last year and I ended up uh, making them on the fly meaning at night in the evenings or on weekends when uh, it was a rainy day and I couldn't go fishing uh, this year I'm going to make more and hopefully uh, and I, I will admit I bought a few last year uh, but this year I'm going to try to make all of my needs for the upcoming season and I thought it was worth uh, going through a little video and show you Primarily the pompano rigs. I, I do make a few mackerel trees uh, for use on the beach. I make a few whiting and croaker rigs. Um, maybe we can show one of those, but uh, the primary focus is pompano rigs. I go through more pompano rigs than anything else. So what I thought we would do in this video is take you through uh, the equipment, the tools, the process, and then take a look at the results. and. Uh, Give you an opportunity to see what I do. Other people do this as well. There's hundreds of videos out there on how to tie uh, rigs, and everybody's got their own way. This is my way that works for me. All right, uh, have a look. All right, let's start first with a little overview on the mackerel tree. Now, I buy mackerel trees with Clark spoons from Walmart. And what I do is those come with uh, four surgical tubing hooks and about a 50 pound leader with a snap swivel on one end and a, uh, a barrel swivel on the other end. And during the year, uh, what happens is, you're because you're getting bluefish and mackerel and jacks on those, you quite often get some frayed line you can't use the whole tree anymore you you know maybe you get bitten off and you end up with two hooks left and two hooks gone what I will do is I will save all the individual hooks with the surgical tubing I throw them in a bag and now this time of year I'm taking all of those because I you know when you're you're paying over six dollars for the, the store-bought ones and I really haven't found a, a better source you take all those scavenged hooks and uh, with some 50 pound leader uh, I retie three hooks onto with dropper loops onto a new leader line with a new snap swivel and a new barrel swivel. Now sometimes I'm able to save the barrel swivels and snap swivels and that's fine if you if you have those it's it's fine you can use those. Um, and so you know I'm able to every year recreate half a dozen mackerel trees just from nothing other than the salvaged hooks that I've taken off of frayed ones from the prior year. So, you know, if I was the the name of this YouTube channel were the Frugal Fisherman, uh, you would understand why. But that's uh, one thing that I do regularly. Um, and I just wanted to show that, and I'm not going to show tying that. Uh, the over the the final rig is about four feet long with three dropper loops and and three uh, hooks with the surgical tubing you can do four actually the ones you buy have four you could do two obviously you could just do one but uh, three works for me all right um, so let's get on to the pompano because I think that's really uh, the primary focus on this video. You know, there was one other thing I wanted to mention uh, about rolling your own here, and that is uh, what it's going to cost you. And before you decide to do this, you do need to think about your sources for this material. Uh, if you go retail and buy a bag of 10 hooks and a bag of 20 floats and uh, you, by the time you get done, not including your time, you'll probably spend a 
between a dollar fifty and two dollars per rig. All right. Um, if you do a little smarter shopping, like I said, you know, garage sales and uh, I, I know some of these red beads I think I got on wish.com, I got 250 beads for a dollar. Um, and, uh, you know, you buying a bag of no name brand offset circle hooks. I mean, if you go buy the, a bag of 10 Mustad 10 Demon circle hooks, it's not going to be 10 cents a hook right and so i just added it quickly up the cost of these i'm paying about 12 dollars sorry 12 cents for the beads um sorry the floats i i said the word bead several times and i i mean floats on the larger ones right those are all float help keep your rig off the off the bottom so you're not catching just catfish i'm paying well under a penny a piece for the small red beads um, you know, I'm at a couple cents a piece for the barrel swivel or the snap swivel, and I'm probably paying a little under 10 cents a hook for the 1.0 offset circle hooks with uh, the beak on them. So my total cost, and obviously you've got some fluorocarbon costs as well, my total cost is probably 50 cents for making 50 or 75 rigs this year um, 50 cents a piece retail you're going to pay between three and four dollars for the same rig you can probably make it yourself same rig already made if you go buy all the materials uh, you're probably going to spend um, you know a dollar fifty per rig uh, if you're a smart shopper and so um, you just got to keep that in mind before you decide you're going to do this. All right, so let's uh, let's get on with it now. All right, uh, we'll do this video in a little bit of a reverse order. Here's the finished product. We're going to end up with uh, bagged rigs, one rig per bag. Uh, I do two hooks per rig. Here's some that have already been completed. Here's some that have been completed but not bagged. I'm out of I'm out of small little bags right now, so I need to uh, round up some more of those. To be honest with you, I prefer the yellow fluorescing, not fluorescing, the bright high vis yellow beads. Um, in this case, you can see what I had been using was the one larger yellow, one smaller yellow, and then a red bead. I wasn't able to find more larger yellow red beads in quantity. Uh, what I've got to work with right now are some multicolored beads, so that's why you see the more recent rigs that I just tied up. I'm working with some different color combinations, uh, things that I've seen and things that I think will work well. Uh, here's one where I've got the, the double yellow beads plus a, a magenta bead, uh, but I'll do some combos here. Uh, and in fact, the uh, the ones that are white are actually uh, have glow-in-the-dark um, coating on them. So I have not tried the glow-in-the-dark large float beads before, but I will try those. I should mention, those are all um, EPS floating beads. And now the small red ones, uh, which we'll look at in a little more detail, those are uh, just solid beads. So obviously to do this, you're going to need some... Um, clippers, uh, clip your, your leader line. Uh, speaking of beads, um, you know, the beads are supposed to represent, this is my understanding, uh, the eggs of the sand fleas. And um, when you do get live sand fleas and take a look at them, they're egg masses. And sometimes those egg masses are large. Um, and I think that's where the idea of using the larger beads come from. Those are probably about eight millimeters. Uh, I've been using smaller beads down in the three millimeter size. There you can see them. They've, they've got the holes in them. It's easy to pass the line through. And um, I find, I, I just like those better. I think it's more representative of what the egg masses look like on the sand fleas that I've looked at. Sometimes I will do two uh, beads per, per rig. We should take a look at some hooks. These are uh, one 
aught offset circle hooks. Some pros say they like to use the, the size one circle hooks. I find them a little small. It's okay if you're just using a piece of fish bite or fish gum, but if you are going to use a piece of dried shrimp, piece of dried clam, a real sand flea, it's pretty tough to get those size one circle hooks loaded up with the bait because they are so small. So I'm using the one O's. Uh, if I do make some whiting uh, croaker rigs, I will use the really small size 4 J hooks. There's a box of those that I'm working through. And then for the other terminal tackle, uh, we're going to use, these are 2 barrel swivels. Um, I've got some, those are like 70 pound, probably overkill for Pompano, but I got a good deal on them. Uh, here's some 50 pound snap swivels. Uh, those, uh, I think I picked those up at a garage sale for a dollar. I got a bag of 50 for a dollar. Those are the kinds of deals you want to look for. And here's some simple barrel swivels, you know, size six, um, rated for 60 pounds. Again, it's another garage sale item. I'd never pay $5.99 for 50 barrel swivels, but I think I paid a dollar a bag for those and I got a couple bags of them. So that'll be more than enough for, for this season. So uh, that's what we're going to work with. Oh, and we've got some fluorocarbon, 30-pound uh, fluorocarbon leader. So uh, we're going to use that set of items and uh, hopefully go from this end of the table and work our way through, um, tie our line, tie our dropper loops, add our swivel, barrel swivel, and uh, snap swivel. Uh, throw on our floats, our beads, our hooks, uh, and coil them up and bag them. So that's where we're headed. That's the whole process, and we'll take you through it. Let's begin. So we're going to start uh, up that much fluorocarbon, five, six feet. By the time we're done, we're, this will end up being approximately a little over 30 six inches, a little over a meter. Um, to be honest with you, I like to start by adding my terminal tackle. And that's because uh, I like just having those extra little weights on the end of my tags uh, as I'm tying the other lines. It helps keep things a little bit more organized. Now, this is not gonna be a knot tying video. Uh, you can go look at Hay Skipper or, uh, you know, there's plenty of other places that will teach you how to tie tie knots. That's not me. Um, I'm just going to do it and then uh, talk you through it. So I'm going to start with the barrel swivel, little saliva. What I'm actually doing here is an improved clinch knot. Uh, I'm not going to bother trying to show close-ups on that. So. Our first knot is done. I'm gonna clip the tag end off the barrel swivel. So we've now got a barrel swivel on one end. We're now gonna to go to the other end where we're gonna put our snap swivel and we're going to uh, tie that. I do seven or eight twists. Um, put my loops through, my tags and my loops through. Wet it. And then um, Tie it off. Tighten it up, snug it up, trim the tag. Now I'm leaving a quarter inch, something like that. Okay, next up, we're going to take our complete leader and we're going to place it into about a third because what we're going to want to do here is we're going to want to put one dropper loop at the one third point and another dropper loop at the second third point. Right? That, that's, our, that's our methodology. So now that we know where the center of the thirds is, so I've got a third hanging down, a third in between my two hands, and a third on the other leg hanging down. We're gonna go to that section where um, it represents the one third point, and the next thing we're gonna tie 
is a dropper loop. Now, again, this is not a knot tying um, video. We call it a T, a T knot, a dropper loop. There's a variety of names for this. But there's one dropper already done. So I, my dropper loops are about three inches long. Uh, they come off the, the leader line at a right angle. And you can see it, it literally takes 10 seconds um, to get those tied up. So the next thing we're gonna do is now between our dropper loop and our uh, barrel swivel, sorry, our uh, snap swivel end, we've already got one third done. Now we're gonna go to the center of what's remaining and we're gonna tie another dropper loop at the center of what's remaining. Make sure we've got enough line. Do the appropriate twist for a dropper loop. Run it through. Our thumb. Come on. Okay, and there's our our second dropper loop. So next, we're gonna add our floats, beads, and hooks. So let's do that next. All right, it's, I decided to reposition the camera so you have a, maybe a little bit better opportunity. Obviously, this is very difficult to see anything with uh, the fluorocarbon line, but um, here's one of the dropper loops. Here's the, the second dropper loop, and we're going to start with uh, a bead. I'm actually going to start, make sure I'm on the right end here. Okay, so this is the lower end. I'm actually going to start this one with the... Uh, this is one of those glow-in-the-dark beads that I, sorry, floats that I mentioned. Um, these are, I, I can tell that the coating here has partially filled the hole uh, that goes through the float, but okay, we got it through. So we've, we've pinched the end of the uh, dropper loop. We've put that doubled over pinched end through the float. We've now put the doubled over pinched end through a bead, one of those uh, three millimeter red beads. Uh, we're now ready for the hook. Put the doubled over pinched end through the eye of the hook, come up over the, the hook, pull tight. And so there you can see our glow in the dark beaded hooked dropper loop, All right? So there's one down. Uh, we're going to do the second one now. Pinch the end. Obviously you want to make sure you don't... Now, and again, there's, there's other ways to attach these hooks um, to these dropper loops. I'm just doing it the way I have always done it. I, I haven't lost a single fish to a failed knot, a failed um, line, a failed rig that I've created because of the way I created the rig. 75% uh, of the fish that I lose, I lose due to sharks. Um, most of the rigs I lose are due to sharks, sometimes snags. So there we have it. So there's our two, our two dropper loops with floats, with beads, with our one-aught circle hooks with our our snap swivel and our barrel swivel as terminal tackle. Uh, oh, there's the, the finished product. So we'll bag these up and uh, make another one. So uh, total time to make that was probably um, you know under two minutes. I'll I'll look at the video. Uh, that's really all there is to it. So you do that uh, another 50 times and you're, you're ready to get the season off to a good start. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, if I get some nice feedback about it, I'll, I can make some others like this regarding uh, a little bit more on the how-to side. I know I need to do more of that on uh, how to service and repair reels and uh, do the rod repairs that I do. I'm doing full rod wrapping 
flex coat epoxying, uh, obviously tip replacements, full service on, on uh, conventional and spinning reels, and a little more how-to on that I know goes a long way to help everybody. So uh, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe to New To You Fishing, and that will allow us to give us the motivation to keep delivering new videos. Thanks a lot. Bye now.